Whatever that is, you're going to answer our prayer. In due season, when it be a day, a week, a month from now, you're going to answer our prayer. Oh, Jesus, you know the immediate ones. You know the urgent ones. You know the ones that can wait. God, you're a good God. You're a loving God. You're a kind Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. worship the Lord. Let's lift our hands everywhere. We just prayed a while ago and we believe that the Lord will have his way, that his will will be done in our lives. Come on, let's lift our hands all over the building. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's really worship our God this morning. Hallelujah. We are in another service. We're in the house of the Lord one more time. Let's just really rejoice in that simple fact. We are together again in one accord. Hallelujah. We're together again just praising the Lord. Hallelujah. We are at the place where troubles are vanished. Hearts are mended. Wounds are healed. Hallelujah. Let's really make a joyful noise before God this morning. Hallelujah. Just open your mouths and begin to bless the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. He's worthy in this house. We give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Let's take a few more moments, man. Let's not, let's not rush this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Really extend your hands and begin to glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're singing in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace. Our troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. Hearts are mended this morning in the presence of the King. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift our voices and sing in the presence of Jehovah. Oh, in the presence. In the presence. Oh, Jehovah.
the key. Hallelujah. That tug of war at me. All day long I've struggled for answers that I need. But when I come and do
worship the Lord this morning? Are you glad for the presence of Jehovah this morning? Oh, are you happy that you're in his presence this morning? All oh, your troubles can be vanished. All oh, your hearts, all oh, problems and situations can go this morning in the presence of Jehovah. Oh, we're singing the, his presence is heaven. His presence is heaven to us this morning. Nothing like his presence this morning. There's nothing like his presence. Can we shout hallelujah for his presence this morning? Can we shout hallelujah for his presence this morning? Hallelujah. His presence is heaven to us. His presence is like heaven, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, your presence is heaven, Lord. Your presence is heaven, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Is like you Lord who is like you Lord in all the earth matchless love and beauty endless word nothing in this world cuz Jesus you're the cup that won't let's sing it one more time who is like you Lord who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and whisper. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Cause Jesus, you're the cup. So we sing your presence is heaven to me. Oh. 
anybody love the presence of the Lord this morning? Oh, I just want to glorify, glorify your name. I just want to glorify, glorify your name. You got the sweetest, you got the sweetest day, my Lord. I'm going to tell it forever I go. Oh!
word of the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through to the end. Reading from the New Living Translation. If it comes on the screen, we'll read responsively. If it doesn't, I'll just read it for you, for us. Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 34. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. When you came in this morning, were you very conscious that you came in to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you really done so since you came? Let's try and do so before we leave. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness and if the light you think you have is actually darkness how deep that darkness is Do you understand the connection between Jesus' teaching about money and his teaching about our eyes? Jamaicans have a saying, red eye. Think about it. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? See the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need not want let's 
lift our hands and worship the Lord. Is it true? Yes. Today's trouble is enough for today. Let's look at verse 32 again. Verse 32 says, These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Let's not move from there. Is it only the thoughts of unbelievers that these things dominate? They don't dominate our thoughts? So are we unbelievers? Brethren, there are just some things we have to gradually look at in the Word. And don't just read over them. We must locate ourselves. And if we find ourselves, we must change. We can't just laugh and say, <laughs> it's not only on the believers, me too. Well, if it's you too, you stay bad. If that's me, I'm bad. I need to change. What do I need to do? What do I need to do? Verse 33 tells me. Above all else. Above all else. Seek the kingdom of God. Above all else. And live righteously. And if I do that, he has promised to give me everything I need. Now, either we believe that or not. And so, he says, if we don't live this way, our faith is little. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now, I want us to just turn to one person. And I want us to ask a relevant question. I want you to ask that person, who is your God? Is it Jesus or money? Walk around and greet several persons now. Amen. Amen. I publish the bonds of marriage between David Randolph Ellis and Rowena Anita Roden, both of the parish of St. Andrew. If anyone knows cause or just impediment, why these two persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, Ye ought to declare it, or forever hereafter hold your peace. 
I published the bonds of marriage between Ruel Tennyson Kellier and Tamika Alandria Singh, both of the parish of St. Catherine. If anyone knows cause or just impediment why these two persons may not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye ought to declare it or forever hereafter hold your peace. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Sister Devil Scott is coming to advise us of the agenda here at Pentecostal Tabernacle for the next few days and to welcome us in a very special way. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise God. It is so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I know the heat is on, mm. but somehow, somehow we are fanning nonetheless, and we're still in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is my delight to welcome everyone to the service this morning. If you are a guest of ours, please stand. This is just our way of acknowledging your wonderful presence. Not to put you on spot, but we're just going to ask you to stand for a few minutes or so. Any guests? Any visitors? Praise the Lord. Come on, members of Penta, put your hands together. Welcome to Pentecostal Tabernacle, Wellman Street. On behalf of all of us, we want to say do enjoy the service. And we want to invite you to come again. The Lord bless you. There are some members who were away for a while and you're here. Just stand and praise the Lord. <laughs> we want to... Was that a praise the Lord with an accent? <laughs> we want to welcome you back to Kingston, Jamaica. All right. God bless you. And those who are viewing us live on live stream all over the world. We want to say a special welcome to you as well. We have Joan, Ch Joan Jones from Manly Meadows. She has been ill and she's now back with us. Is that Joan? Joan Jones? Where are you? Oh, on the balcony. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome back. And we are very happy that you are feeling much better now. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, the service... It was just not the same when all our members were away. Praise God. Please listen to the announcements. Tell your neighbor, listen to the announcements. All right. Now, we will be having a service this evening, and it starts at 645. Amen. We want to also come out for prayer. In our daily Bible reading, we're at 1 Chronicles 19, and we go to 1 Chronicles 26. Uh, the following Sunday, the 20th of September, special time. Uh, on Tuesday, 12 noon to 2 p.m., Golden Ages per time in the sanctuary, and I'm sure our Golden Ages are looking forward to that. On Wednesday, it's the beginning of our September to Remember services under the theme, Restoring the Wounded, Helping the Hurting, and I do believe that the first speaker is Dr. Lyndon Johnson. And we look forward to those services. Amen. Can we shout hallelujah? hallelujah. And how could I forget if you celebrated a birthday maybe this, well, last week. Or you're going to celebrate a birthday this week. We want to say happy, happy, happy birthday to you. And of course, if you are going to celebrate your anniversary or you have celebrated your anniversary, we want to say a special anniversary greeting to you. Amen? <laughs> that was just an insert. All right, so we continue our September to Remember services. So that's Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. On Saturday, that's the 19th of September. Can you imagine the year is almost over? You have youth choir practice, and it starts at 4 p.m. The 20th of September, um, 6 a.m., Rightly Dividing the Word on RJR, Fame FM, 
7 a.m. prayer time in the sanctuary, 8 a.m. pre-session, 8.30 Sunday school, and at 10.15 we have our worship service, children's church and teen tab, and at 6.45 our evening service. Our September to remember services will continue next week, September 23, 25, and 27 under the theme, Transformation of the Inner Man. Get your flyers from an usher and invite your friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, and others to this life-changing event. And just a special highlight here from the Pentab High Day and Evening Institute. Uh, the institution is still registering. It is also an exam center, and I think it was this year they got 85% passes. That's the evening. I think that is something to celebrate. 85% passes in the examination. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. And I was advised that there is a special announcement. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm up here to invite all the students, well, you're the parents, so, um, to students' prayer meeting. It's from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. I believe students' prayer meeting is really helpful in building us spiritually and also good in building relationships among fellow church members. Um, last year, um, on Wednesdays, last year we went out and witnessed to students around the community and it was really helpful for all of us. So I believe students primary will be good. And I hope that you coerce your children to attend. So Amen. I do hope that you coerce your children. It is <laughs> on a serious note though, folks. This is something that all of us should endorse. It's the prayer meeting finishes at five. That's early enough for children to go home while we still have light. And um, I just believe that it's something that we need to push and push very hard. Push very hard. And I, all the parents who have children who are teenagers, would you stand up, please? If, if it's possible for, for you to have them come, I'd really like to ask you to encourage them to come. I know it might not be possible. It might call for an adjustment or even a sacrifice. If you're able to make it, we would be very grateful. And more so, your children would be richly blessed. Praise the Lord, everyone. All right, so the service this evening is going to be held here in the sanctuary. It's going to be held here, and I'd like to see everybody that's here back tonight. It's, it would just be good to see everybody back here. It would just be good. Tell the person beside you, it would be good if I saw you here when I came tonight, and I'm coming. I'm going to ask our ushers to come, please. While they're coming, brethren, i just like to say this to you. I believe that there are some persons, maybe a few, who missed us for a couple of weeks, and you thought that we were on vacation. But we weren't on vacation. We weren't on vacation. You hear, folks? We weren't on vacation. We were asked to minister at one convocation in Toronto. And then we went to another one in Edmonton. So, and in fact, Tuesday of last week, 
we had to teach Bible study and then go from the church to the airport to catch a 12.35 a.m. flight. So we came back very tired. And whenever you see us go away, it's not on a vacation. Somebody's paying for the trip and it's for ministry. All right? Could you spread that word around for me, please? <laughs> Let's all stand. Most times we come back more tired than when we left. Most times. Most times. But I want to bring you greetings from a couple persons, Sister Janice Brown and her daughter Brianna asked me to greet the church. Um, John and Marion Kelly. Uh, oh my. Um, some folks did ask me to greet you. I'm trying to think of the persons who you would know. I'm not remembering all the names. When I remember, I will pass them on to you. Amen. Amen, everybody. But it was just good to connect with some people that we hadn't seen for a little while. And then, you know, I'm always meeting persons who say to me, I was a member of Penn. I met a gentleman, a pastor who said, he got the Holy Ghost here in the 60s. And just, I meet upon people like that. And um, uh, a gentleman, you know, I realize how many people watch our live stream. Um, a gentleman came up to me, a minister actually, and he greeted me. He said, greetings, great chief. And I said, great chief? And he said, oh, you don't remember, great chief, no use cell phone, only send smoke signal. You might remember Brother Berger did a promotion. So that's how it is, you know, folks. So I didn't even recall what he was talking about at first, the first time I met him. Great chief. So that's, it, it, it just tells you how many persons are, are, watching. Oh, Brother, Brother Donovan is asking me to, to say this to you. I, I said it in the board meeting and I told the choir. I told them. Um, this lady came to me and she said to me, Pastor, I just want to let you know that, you know, I was in a backslidden condition and it was the live stream at Pentecostal Tabernacle that restored me. And um, I, was, I was very touched. She spoke about some of the messages, but she also said the ministry of the choir has been so, so much of a blessing. And she, she said to me, Pastor, I don't have any money, really, but she gave me several bags of sweets, and she said, please give them to the choir for me. And I thought that was such a blessing. So, let's clap our hands for that lady. She probably is watching right now. She's probably watching right now. Oh, I I have them upstairs there. They're not, I didn't have them. I'm, I'll give Brother Damien later. Amen. Now, folks, they, I, I understood that we should, or it was said that we would go on the road this evening. So the choir didn't know that they would be singing in the sanctuary. So when they come this evening, they won't necessarily have on uniforms okay but I hope we can get past that I hope we are at a stage where that won't be a stumbling block I really do hope so uh, I hope we are 
we have matured past that. All right. I'd like for everybody to reach into your purses and handbags and wallets and billfolds and pocketbooks. And in addition to your tithe and your faith promise offering, I'd like you to give the equivalent of a thousand U.S. dollars. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'd just like us to be faithful in our giving. Amen? Very important, brethren. Very important that we be faithful. Please do not be slack concerning the business of the Lord. Please, please do not be slack. The Lord is appraising us in every area of our lives. And um, while it is good to talk about Jesus and to make verbal expressions, those won't take us into heaven. We must be doers of the word not hearers only. James said those who hear the word and do not do it are deceiving themselves. Why are they deceiving themselves? Because they think they are okay. They think that expressions are good enough. They think testimonies are good enough. But James says the doers of the word are the ones that are justified. Would you bow your heads please? Lord Jesus... This world is not our home. We have here no continuing city. We seek for a city. Like Abraham of old, we are looking for a city. A city with foundations whose builder and maker is God. Your kingdom is the only kingdom that will not go down. We remember Lord the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw which represented the kingdoms of this world and there was a stone that was cut out of the mountain that eventually destroyed all the kingdoms of the world and became itself a very great kingdom representing the kingdom of God. The investments that we make in your kingdom are the only ones from which we will derive eternal benefits. Help us not to be foolish, Lord. Just reading about laying up treasures in heaven and not doing it. Help us not to be foolish. Help us not to be those who love money more than we love God. Help us not to be those who despise God but honor money. For we can't love both. Help us to trust you to provide. Help us to take care of our responsibilities to the kingdom and then trust you to provide. We give this offering to you because we love you and we just want to say to you thanks for being so good. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're marching today and our musicians and singers are leading us in worship as we come with our gifts. Sorry, so sorry. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that, that you never thought of me. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many of the blessings that you give unto me, blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you ever thought of. Give up to me, let it overflow like a 
Hallelujah. Listen, folks, we better be very careful. We better be very careful that we don't get more excited about you saying and Shelly than we do about Jesus. I hope you are knocking your pot covers for Jesus. I hope you are making some noise for Jesus. Listen, I have no problem celebrating their achievements. But nobody is going to get me to behave so bad as when I get into the presence of Jesus. Folks, I don't know about you, I only have one hero. I only have one hero. Always, always, we must be careful that Jesus gets the best. Lift your hands and worship him. Don't make idols out of men and women. We only have one God. His name is Jesus. You may be seated. Our scholarship division is coming. They have something very important to let us know of. Sister Kimberly McGregor, if you're here, could you just come up front and sit on one of these white chairs here, please? Bless the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. Today we'll be making a presentation to our scholarship recipients. I'm going to invite them to come along with the committee members. Before we make this presentation, I'd like to read a brief thing to you. It says, Pentecostal Tabernacle Scholarship Program takes pleasure in granting four awards for the academic year 2015-2016 in the form of two scholarships and two book grants, with a recipient benefiting from each category, that's a basic, primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. These awards are made possible through funds raised from faithful and committed contributors. Those include the General Assembly, that's you, members, the committee, Project Hope, past recipients, friends of the program, the committee wishes to extend its heartfelt gratitude to all contributors, both locally and overseas, whose contribution will assist four young persons to advance their education and afford them the opportunity to make a positive contribution to society and the kingdom of God. In the same vein, we pause to say thanks and to recognize and express our sincere condolence to the family of Brother Glenton Rose. He was a scholarship contributor, and we want to say thanks to his family. Now, at this moment, we're going to ask Amanda Malab. She's one of the past recipients of the scholarship. She would like to say thanks, and we think it is fitting to allow her to say thanks at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Amanda Malarve, as was mentioned before, and I'm a recent awardee for the scholarship program for the year 2014 to 2015. Now, I would just like to take this opportunity to really thank the committee and the other related contributors because it has really been beneficial to me, as in not only just providing financial assistance, but it has also encouraged me to believe in myself and so with this confidence, I managed to pass my CAPE exam unit one with grade ones, two, and three. So.
So I would just like to thank them again for all that they have done, for the support and the encouragement and the belief that they've showed in me. And I would like to encourage everyone here to really sponsor this program and this initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We're, we'll be presenting the two grants just now. The first one is in the primary division, and it is going to Abigail Mitchell. Abigail is awarded a book grant to continue her studies at micro practice in primary and junior high. She was awarded a scholarship last year. To, and she performed at a very high standard. Her favorite memory verse for the year is Ephesians 6 verse 11, which says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The next book grant is to Justin Thompson. And he's awarded this grant to continue his studies at Kingston College. He just passed the GSAT examination to Kingston College. <laughs> Justin did very well at the GSAT examinations. And he, his dream is to become a police officer. <laughs> yes, he's desirous of bringing order to the society and to be a police officer with integrity. Amen. Now, our two scholarship recipients is at the basic and the tertiary level. The first one is Carice Drummond. Carice, you may step forward. What is there? <laughs> Carice will be attending Yellas Primary, Yellas Early Childhood Institution. She's already an A student. She wants to become a doctor. And she loves to quote her favorite verses. Now, we will allow her to quote one of her favorite verse because she asked us, please, to allow her to quote her favorite verse. Thank you for the scholarship. God bless you. Now, Moses is taken. Second Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come on from among them, and be separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Amen. Thank you. Bless the Lord. And our final recipient is Sasha Buchanan. She's not a stranger to this program. She will continue her studies in the field of nursing at the International University of the Caribbean. A poised and soft-spoken young lady, Sasha desires to support our health fairs and in any other area of the assembly that will require her expertise. We thank you once again for contributing to this very vital program and you see what it has done for our children. And we ask, we encourage you to please continue to support it. Give whatever you have, just write on the envelope scholarship program and just send it in. We'll be very happy to receive it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sister Yvonne. Thank you, Sister Paula Walters, and all those who work with you. Very good, very good. I feel so pleased. Amen. Wonderful. Let's give all these precious people a great hand clap of appreciation. Stand up, Sister Kimberly. Sister Kimberly is leaving us. She's a daughter of Sister Eichelin, who works at the church here, and she's leaving us to go to New York on a permanent basis. And she told me, Pastor, I don't want to come up here. She said, please don't let me come up here. And we understand. So we won't force her to come up here. So we will go down there. <laughs> Sister Kimberly is a very precious young lady. And um, she plans to go away and do nursing. And we just want to commit her to the care of the Lord and to his nurture. And so I'd like for us to pray for her at this time. Let's all stand. 
Elders, if you would come, please. Let's just pray for her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just stretch your right hand forward as we pray for her today. Let's all say in Jesus' name. Let's say in Jesus' name. One more time in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord is good, stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trusteth in him. Let's stand, please. Just before the choir sings, we want to pray for some very special persons. Um, we have among us, several families who have been bereaved of loved ones and I I was telling some persons uh, recently that it's happening seemingly all over just several people families losing loved ones I'm not sure if you are aware of the fact that right after the funeral of Bishop Hewitt, then another prominent member of the assembly passed away, the sister of Bishop Ira D. Thompson, and then the sister who helped Sister Hewitt to care for Bishop Hewitt passed away in her early 40s, like that. So it has been happening. And sometimes, brethren, at the end of services, when we ask you just to hold person's hands and to pray for them, I don't know, maybe you're not understanding why, but you just never know. You just never know. And there are some persons in our midst who have lost loved ones. And we just want to take the time to pray for you. We're going to ask you to come to the altar. I know just a couple of days ago, the son, the eldest son of... Brother Isaiah Miller and Sister Naomi Miller passed away overseas, and so they are grieving. They're leaving this week to go and sort things out. Of course, Carlene and Carla Rose, um, the Smith family, and so many others. Would you just come to the altar, Sister Doyle, who was a member here for many years, and was worshiping at the potter's house. She passed away. Just things happening that, you know, I remember when I got saved, maybe you'd have three or four persons pass away for the entire year. 
I know it's every month. Every month. Yes, 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 yes. It's important for us to do this. Very important. And I, I would like to ask just members of the body of Christ, if you would just come around these precious people and just hug them and stand beside them. We're going to be praying for them. Sister Dawn, are you here? Dawn Walters? Oh, she's here. Um, Sister Ava, we want to pray for you. Come, Sister Ava. I'd like some of you ladies just to lay hands on Sister Ava right there. We're going to pray for her. She has a physical condition and just want the Lord to minister to her. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Let's lift our voices and pray now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands in the sanctuary and worship the Lord who is giving them strength. Yes, who is putting strength into them, who is comforting, who is encouraging, who is helping. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's remember, brethren, to continue to pray for these precious persons. And as I keep saying, if it hasn't touched you yet, just wait. It's coming. It's not going. All of us get a taste of it before we die. The choir is preparing to minister as they do. i just like to um, just recognize one of my good friends, Dr. Linton. Dr. Linton had surgery. A couple, well, just a couple days ago, didn't expect to see her here. Doc, would you just wave your hands? Wonderful to have you. Let's clap our hands for her. Very precious young lady. Pastor Clement Brown called and did ask for us to greet you, and we do so. Pastor Clement Brown and Sister Louise Brown, let's remember them in prayer. Choir is ministering as we continue to worship the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's worship the Lord. If you know that you serve a good God this morning. In spite of all the challenges, in spite of all that's going on, he's still good. He's still good. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord as we minister about the goodness of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands.
putting it mildly is much better than good is much better than good brother david reynolds is so good to see you brother david reynolds from pentab in north miami just a good friend it's very good to see you sir very good we're glad you're here john chapter 18 verses 33 to 38 just like to say, brethren, that um, whenever I have to go overseas, I'm never nervous about the activities here at Pentecostal Tabernacle. I'm never nervous. And I really mean that. I believe that the persons who share the leadership with me are very capable. And I don't lose any sleep. I'm telling you the truth. I don't even watch live stream. I just know it's going to be good. Amen. 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 And I want to give the brethren thanks for giving leadership, all our pastoral assistants and members of the church board, ministry leaders. Thank you so much. We're reading from John 18, beginning at verse 33 and going to 38. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? When he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. You may be seated, please. I want to ask that question that Pilate asked. What is truth? What is truth? What is truth? Dr. Martin Luther King said, perhaps it may be more than 50 years ago, he said, the people of ill will have used time much more effectively than have the people of goodwill. <clears throat> we will have to repent in this generation not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Human progress never rolls on, never rolls in on wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of men willing to be co-workers with God. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always ripe to do right. So, I guess he was also asking, what is truth? Pilate 
is the governor of Judea. Pilate is a hardened Roman soldier and a minor administrator. Pilate is used to political affairs. Pilate is probably cynical at this point in his life. He has heard a lot of good talk and hasn't seen a lot of good action. Pilate knows how to play the political game. When he surrendered Jesus to the Jews, he was doing so because he was being political. He never handed Jesus over to be crucified because he thought that he was guilty. What seemed to have sealed the deal was when the religious leadership says, if you release him, you are no friend of Caesar. Because he says that he's a king. And we have only one king, that is Caesar. Pilate said, you know what? I better just do what they're asking me to do because I don't want to have any trouble. It was politically correct. So here is Jesus standing before him talking about truth. Pilate says, what is truth? What is truth? I'm amazed, you know, because I watch us living in a bubble that we have created and call it the church world. And if we're not careful, that has become an idol. And we think that everybody in the world thinks like us. And we think that they think that the bubble that we live in is right. But a lot of people out there are asking, what is true? A lot of people are becoming increasingly less and less willing to say, I am, for instance, a Baptist. I have been a Baptist all my life and I'll, I'll be a Baptist until I die. Or a Catholic or an Anglican or a Methodist or a Seventh-day Adventist or an Apostolic. If we're not careful, we can become cynical. Even, even ourselves can become cynical. Because we hear a lot about being in the truth. And, and we think that people will necessarily be convinced just by an argument. But standing before Pilate was not just one who talked about truth, but standing before Pilate was the embodiment of truth. This was truth in human form. What is truth? Is it just having the right form of doctrine? Or must truth be lived out? I'm, I'm hard-pressed to explain that the gospel is more than Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. The gospel is more than that. We can do that, take care of that, and still not be true to the gospel. You know that, right? So, well... Brethren, would it be possible for you to put up Galatians chapter 2 for me? I'm going to take my time. You can leave when you want to. Go down uh, to verse 10. Let me see what it says. Go down more. Verse 15. Go up more. Little bit more. All right. When Peter 
was come to Antioch. This is Paul writing. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. What was he to be blamed for? For before that certain came from James, certain brethren came from James, the Jerusalem church, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. See, politics, that's politics in church. Politics, he wants to be politically correct. He's doing church, he's not doing kingdom. That's what happens when you do church. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. You know the word dissimulation means hypocrisy. So this, this must have hurt Paul a lot. Barnabas being carried away because Barnabas was the one who stood up with him and defended the thing. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of what? Gospel. Now, all of these persons, every one of them that we're talking about, had been baptized in Jesus' name and had received the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and believed in the oneness of God. All of them. So the gospel is more than Acts 2.38. All of them had satisfied Acts 2.38, but they were, some of them weren't walking according to the truth of the gospel. Because you see, the gospel doesn't just tell you how to be saved. The gospel tells you how to live a saved life. And the Gentiles being circumcised was not part of the gospel. And hypocrisy is not part of the gospel. So what is true? I can be saved according to the plan of salvation and say that I'm in the truth. But does it mean I'm walking according to truth? What is, what is truth? People are asking that. What is truth? You, you say your church is the right church. What is truth? I think people want to hear more than just what we have to say. They are looking for us to be the embodiment of truth. They are looking for somebody to live out the truth of the gospel before them. They want to hear more than that they must be baptized. They want to see in my life a reason why they should. Because if I am saved, there should be Something that can be seen. If I say that Jesus has made this tremendous difference in my life. If I testify I was going down destruction broad road. And Jesus intervened. There must be some evidence of his intervention. Apart from speaking in tongues. Whose life are we impacting? Now we have a proliferation of churches that have sprung up. No real doctrinal position. Anything goes. And people are going to them. What do you believe? Anything. How should we be baptized anyway? What is true? Truth doesn't mean that you won't be, if you are the embodiment of truth, if you live a truthful life, it, don't, it won't mean that you are not persecuted. Vilified, it doesn't mean your life will not stir up controversy. <clears throat> because there's no human being that was as vilified and attacked as Jesus. And he was truth. And sometimes, brethren, sometimes, sometimes, 
you know, when, when there's nothing evil that people can say about you, it's because you've never taken a stand for anything. Once you take a stand for something, there are going to be persons who oppose that stand. But because some people never take, they, they have no courage to come out and say, this is my position. Everybody speaks well of them. Because nobody knows where you are defending. But Jesus took a stand. And he was probably more hated than loved. But it didn't mean he wasn't right. Anybody here willing to take a stand? Or you just want everybody to speak well of you? So you can blend in and fit into everything. Have people like that. They, they, they fit into every situation. Never able to take a stand. So everybody say, what a nice lady. She, she agree with everybody. What is true? If we're not careful, folks, we live in this, in, in our own little unrealistic world and think that we are impressing people because we come to church. Listen to what Paul says. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. New Living Translation. He says, are we beginning to praise ourselves again? Are we like others who need to bring you letters of recommendation? Or who ask you to write such letters on their behalf? Surely not. The only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, do I really have to carry a letter from some authority to explain to you who I am? And these days now, anywhere you go, you have to send a long profile. And if you don't send one, they make up one. Because I was at a place, and when they read some things, I never even knew about some of those things. I said, where get that from? And they said, boy, somewhere on the internet. And I had to tell a certain place, I was, they kept calling me bishop. I said to them, listen, I used to be the assistant superintendent of the organization that I am a part of. And because of that, they used to call me bishop. But I have left that a long time ago. So I'm no longer bishop. I am bishop down. <laughs> Paul said, your lives, your lives, are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Your lives. Everyone can read it. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the result of our ministry among you. This letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but on human hearts. Paul is saying, the ministry that we had among you testifies of what God has done in your life. The way you live your life is the only letter we need. People watching your lives can know that the Holy Spirit has done a work in your life. That's truth. That's truth when they don't have to ask you if you are a Christian. When it's not so important what church you go as the God that you have a relationship with.
1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. King James Version has it like this. For our gospel came not unto you in word only. Paul is saying that. Our gospel didn't come to you in word only. We didn't just come and tell you Acts 2.38. But also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. The assurance of the gospel is the lives of those who are transformed. The gospel has no assurance outside of that. Acts 2.38 is meaningless. If I can't demonstrate a changed life, don't tell me about the plan of salvation if I can't see the work of salvation in your life. Much assurance. You know what manner of men we were among you. That was the assurance that the thing works. Don't tell me what church you go to. Let me see you living and I will be able to judge for myself. If the thing really works. Because if it don't work for you. Don't export it. Paul says you became followers of us. And look. And of the Lord. That's what he says in verse 6. You became followers of us. And of the Lord. That word followers is the translation of a Greek word which means imitators. So Paul said, I was walking so closely after Jesus. That you, you couldn't see Jesus. But you saw Paul. So you imitated Paul. But because Paul had imitated Jesus so closely. To imitate Paul was to imitate Jesus. I wonder if anybody has seen the real Jesus in my life. Not the manual Jesus, you know, the real Jesus. The real Jesus that knew how when it was necessary to sit down flat and talk to roadside people. I wonder if anybody has seen the real Jesus in my life. Or they have seen the Pentecostalized Jesus. Has anybody seen the Jesus in you that walks the lonely roads and will engage with the prostitutes? What is truth? Who are we relevant to? Just to ourselves? Whose life am I touching with my apostolicity? Is it being effective? Listen to how the message puts this passage. It says, when the message we preach came to you, it wasn't just words. Something happened to in you. Something happened in you. The Holy Spirit put steel in your convictions. You paid careful attention to the way we lived among you and determined to live that way yourself. In imitating us, you imitated the master. In imitating us, 
you imitated the master. I, I really want that in my life. Brethren, I'm so tired of preaching and teaching. I really want to start doing some powerful living so that the truth will live in me. Not just through what I say, but how I interact with people. So that nobody won't have to ask if my life has changed. Have you ever, let me ask you this question. Let me get brutally honest. I'm going to ask you to stand. If you have met anybody who the sweetness of their life impacted you, just the fragrance, it impacted you. And then when you checked out, you found out that they were not apostolic. That ever happened to you? What was the cause of that, you think? What was the cause? That's what I'm reaching for, you know, folks. Truth. What is truth? Why did their lives impress you? Thank you. You may be seated. Why did their lives impress you? What do you think we were all saved for? Paul says we were saved to look like Jesus. Romans 8, 29 and 30. That's what he says, you know. The Lord foreknew us and predestinated us so that we could look like Jesus and act like Jesus. I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible. Listen to this. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. This is how the message records Matthew chapter 5, 41 to 48. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff. Live generously. You're familiar with the old written law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. He gives his best. The sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone regardless. The good and bad. The nice and nasty. So if you do that, you are acting like God. That's what people need to see in my life. Everybody needs to see it in my life. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Jesus is not going to commend you for that. I'm sorry. You will get praise of men, not from God. You're supposed to do that. Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. Our problem in the church, we celebrate mediocrity. In a world, in a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects, now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others. The way God lives toward you. What is truth? Let's stand.
You know, everywhere I go, I'm meeting people, especially young people. They are not satisfied for you to tell them you, you have the truth. You are in the truth. What they see around them sometimes is hypocrisy. Sometimes my, my heart is broken at my own self and my failure to live out the truth in my own life. So that's, that's where I'm struggling now. Brother, this is certain things that you are struggling with. I've gone past those things in my mind a long time ago. You know. I'm grappling with deeper issues. I really want to be like Jesus, or this don't make no sense to me. People can't see Jesus in me, and I'm not talking about just how I dress. I'm talking about how I treat them. Because if you look good and you don't treat people good the way you look, become a turn off. That's what we don't understand. Some of us, the way we look, it disgusts people because they are looking for something that will match how you look from your life. You never know that somebody could talk so straight to you, eh? No, I, I, not too long ago, I was talking in a certain place and an elderly gentleman called me over. 85 years old, a pastor in Jamaica, but we were somewhere else. And he said, to, he, he asked me to sit down, and with tears in his eyes, he said to me, we never heard it like that. He said, I've heard so many people in my ministry, and I thought I was doing right. That's what they told us. And he said, pastor, pray for me. I don't want to hurt nobody else. And I told him, I've heard many people too, Daddy. Let's just see if Jesus will forgive us and have mercy on us. I'm, just, I'm going to close. I'm just going to close. Uh, brethren, I, I really want the best for every member of Pentecostal Tabernacle. I, I want us to do more than talk. See, if I was pastoring in Kentucky, if I was pastoring in Kentucky, if I was pastoring in, Ken in Kentucky, see, this Sunday that, that lady spent in prison, the whole church and me would be down by the prison house, you know. Yeah, man, the police would have to say you can't do it. But I would try. And I would tell the people, just be peaceful. And you see, we don't understand. Because we, we holding up signs, you know, that these people going to burn in hell. Put down your sign, man. That's not what we are there for. People know what we are against. They don't know what we are for. Nobody knows that we are for loving the homosexual. You know why they don't know? Because we're not for that. We just talk about it. We, we don't know how to love the homosexual but hate the sin. We hate everybody. But I would have gone down there with the church very peacefully. Just to pray and say, I'm here to support the lady. I'm not here against homosexuals. I'm for the lady. And I'm for love. And I want every homosexual to know that I love them. And I'm willing to work with them to change. But if them kill me, them just, I, but I do, I, I, maybe I don't even care no more.
But we, we just talk, you know. And I've been telling this church for a long time. I, some of you might remember. I've been telling us that with the rapture not coming before persecution come to the church, you know. Listen to this. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. This is, this is how kingdom people will. This is Jesus. This is not necessarily how church people live. This is how kingdom people are supposed to live. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of, God, of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. Peacemaker is somebody who actively goes and tries to fix it. Peacekeeper shut them out and say, but you know, I'm not going to bother say anything. Peacemaker goes and say, there's a problem between me and you. I take the initiative. I want to make peace. Me not in the hypocrisy. I smile with you and have you up in my heart. You do me this and I never like it. Can we sit down and talk about it? Peacemakers, not peacekeepers. They said, Are the peacemakers? For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted. For righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom. You see how much time kingdom because Jesus dealing with kingdom. A church, not dealing with empire, I'm dealing with kingdom. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all man of evil against you falsely. Falsely. It mustn't be true. Them will call you a thief, but it mustn't be true. If they persecute you for being a thief and you are a thief, take your lick. I are a thief. You can't rejoice. You can't rejoice. You rejoice when it's not true. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. Anybody here ever use salt? Anybody here ever use salt to season meat? Anybody here ever season a pound of beef with a pound of salt? Anybody here ever season a pound of beef? With a half pound of salt, quarter pound, tablespoon. Some of you use tablespoon, your hand heavy. Don't invite me for dinner. You will kill me. How much? Teaspoon? Half. So tell me something now. It takes, let's, let's work with half. It takes half a teaspoon of salt to season a pound of beef. So why we think that it takes a whole heap of us to affect our world? You know why we think so? Because we really not saw, we, we have lost our saltiness. So nobody don't see the difference between us and them. We operate just like them. Maybe curse all bad word too. But speak in tongues little after that. Or before. And tell them you're not in the truth. I 
I've heard of pastors having affairs with members of the church. And then that same member that he has had the affair with goes and gets married to an unsafe person. And the pastor said, you're unequally yoked. You're sinning against God. Open the floodgates of heaven. Anybody here want to be really saved? You want to be really saved? Really saved. I mean really saved. Stand and lift your hands and worship Jesus. was never the intention of Jesus for us to be here coming here every Sunday and looking pretty and judging each other and criticizing each other he wants us to be salt and light that's what we need to be salt and light right where you are you don't have to be a missionary to China be a missionary at JPS, be a missionary at Flow, be a missionary at Digicel, be a missionary at Jamaica National, be a missionary at Kingston College, be a missionary at UTEC, be a missionary there. sing that a couple of times before we go. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. What is true? What is true? Lord,
asking anyone to come to this altar to become a member of the church. We never have and we never will. We're asking you to be a Christian. Perhaps not even a Christian, but a disciple of Jesus Christ. Willing to suffer affliction and loss. Willing to take up the cross. Not willing to have a Jesus who will operate as a Santa Claus. But a Jesus who makes demands. Who wants to affect every area of your life. If you want that, if you want a life transforming experience, would you just slip out of your seat and come to this altar for just five minutes? Just five minutes. We want to pray for you. If you are a child of God, you're just tired of being a Christian and saying that you were raised in the truth. But you really want your life to be salt and light. You can also come. Anybody like that? We want to just take five minutes and pray for you. to change you radically on the inside. Tell him that you can't go on like this any longer. Tell him you're desperate for a change. Then I'd like the rest of us just to find maybe one or two persons. And we're going to pray for each other. We're going to pray that God would help us to move beyond good words and move beyond doctrinal integrity to a practical life integrity to transform our doctrinal truth into practical truth that is lived out before people who are looking we're going to cover each other too. Ask the Lord to cover that person with his protection. Ask the Lord to draw near to that person. Ask the Lord to heal that person, to minister to that person. Just in case it's the last time you're seeing that person. Send them away with the blessing of the Lord ringing in their soul, with the peace of God in their hearts. Let's pray for each other right 